Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Pathfinder. This is going to be, basically what I'm doing here is, I've got these two story journals. There's two of them, and I don't know which one is better, so I'm going to kind of read from whichever one I think sounds good. Basically, I was using this one here that says, by Julian Dick, and I've really liked this one, but everybody to a man recommended that I use this one by Neil Edmonds. And one of the things people like this about this one is that it's it's written in, you know, RP, you know what I mean? So it's, it's sort of written in first person and all this kind of stuff. And also he wrote one for the entire Pathfinder series, so you can have like continuity. But I'm gonna sort of read bits and bads from both. Now the way it works is that you have a prologue and an epilogue for each adventure plus an introduction. So when I do the games, I'm going to read the epilogue and the prologue for the next, for the previous and the next adventure in the video. So because this is the first video, we'll just have the prologues. Next time I do one of these, I'll do the epilogue for this series and the prologue for the next one. And these will sort of space out the guide and we'll end up with uh, an audio book basically of the adventure. So let's get into this. Now, my pronunciation of fantasy words is pretty rank, so bear with me on that. Please feel free to type in as comments any pronunciation fixes, and I'll try and you know incorporate it. But uh, yeah, just be warned, I suck at fantasy names. Okay, so let's get started with a little bit of background. So this is the adventure path, Wrath of the Righteous. When the Abyssal Portal first opened in the barbarian realm of Sarkosis over a hundred years ago, the world wound tore reality apart, murdering a whole nation and unleashing a ravenous demonic horde upon the world. Only the quick action of several other nations of knights, barbarians and heroes stemmed the demon army and contained it within the lost Sarkosis for the next century. The Crusader of the Mendev have stood as a bulwark against the ever-expanding demonic blight. Warriors, both devout and opportunic, have responded ever since by making a long trek to Avistan's far north. Four Crusades have attempted to cleanse the land, but each seems to meet a worse fate than the last. Their greatest success, the line of magical artifacts known as the Wardstones that stand sentinel along the Worldwind border, barely managed to contain the demons. Built as the ultimate defensive line during the Second Crusade, they are a magical menhars of tremendous power linked to form an invisible wall that destroys any lesser demons that dare approach it. The Fourth Crusade hasn't really ended as much as it petered out, yet some refuse to accept that. Amid crippling shortages and record lows in morale among the Crusaders, the Mendivian war effort teeters on the brinks of collapse. Though the demonic occupation of the worldwood is growing, as is the corruption among the Crusaders, it has grown among various crusading companies, knightly orders and other organizations involved in the war, and it is a large part an unavoidable result of human nature. But over the decades, it's been subtly nurtured and encouraged by the demons, particularly the secret order of the Temple of the Ivory Labyrinth. These cultists of the demon lord Baphomet have infiltrated every major group among the Crusaders, working at undermining their morale and corrupting purity from within, even as the demon host of the world wound relentlessly attacks them from without. For a time, the Templars were content to sow the seeds of corruption and lay foundations of rebellion and disorder, but the demon Lord Descari has grown impatient. A hundred years after the death of his old nemesis, Oroden, Descari has now set his endgame in motion, and Baphomet and his cult are hesitant to comply by stepping up their acts of corruption and treachery within the ranks. Queen Galfrey, the absolute monarch of the Crusade of Mendev and leader of the Mendevian Crusades, has sent out the call. Can anyone rise up against the demon host to prevent the armies of Descari, the lords of the Locust Host, and the Usherer of the Apocalypse from swallowing the world? Can anyone seal the world wound forever? Into the world wound. Adventure Path Zero. The Pathfinder Society is on the verge of one of the greatest archaeological discoveries since the beginning of the Age of Lost Omens. Teams of agents scattered throughout the inner sea discovered that the lost city of Jorodom lies within the lost Sarkosis Frostmire Fen called Wolfcrags. 
now consumed by the world wound. Opening Jorodom would be the crowning achievement of any Pathfinder agent's career, ensuring a prominent place in what will likely become a widely read volume of the Pathfinder Chronicles. Unable to push far into the demon-infested wasteland by itself, the society intends to could the society intends to recruit potent aid in this dangerous endeavour. In return for the opportunity to reclaim their lost stronghold, the dwarves are willing to provide military assistance and historical expertise. Groups of pathfinders are sent to the capital city of Mendev, Nurasan, to prepare for the expedition to the dwarven sky citadel, Jorodun. The Pathfinder Society also joined the Crusaders at Mendev in repulsing the demons and containing the Abyssal Wasteland. However, reaching the Sky Citadel remains a priority, and to ensure this mission's success, the Society needs additional help. Canabras, the infamous city of witch hunters, sits on the border of the World Wound in the nation of Mendev, and it's where we're currently serving in the Mendivian Crusade, just beyond the massive ironworks that channel water into the city from the river below, behind the barrier of ward stones erected during the Second Mendivian Crusade, lies what remains of the shattered nation of Sarkorsus. Its lands warped and twisted by a century of close proximity to the abyssal portal known as the World Wound, and the depredations visited upon it by the marauding demons. Canabras was a rallying point for refugees when the World Wound first appeared, opening its gates to the neighbours and trading partners ravaged by the demonic invasion. This hospitality quickly turned cold when a demonic infiltrator disguised as a refugee slaughtered 62 citizens early one morning in 4607. The tragic event was called the Red Morning Massacre. Subsequent refugees were exposed to a battery of invasive tests and regarded with suspicion once they were granted reticency. These ill feelings led to many witches being burned at the stake by enthusiastic citizens for having the appearances or faiths that differed from local norms. The Church of Imade eventually stepped in to regulate these witch hunters and provide some inquisitors of their own. The results were a mixed blessing. The church's agents conducted sophisticated investigations, employing magical or divine means to root out genuine fiends, but the process was slow. The independent witch hunters worked swiftly, but remained an unscrupulous lot driven by prejudice and greed, more likely to visit harm upon the innocent than punish the guilty. Years of constant warfare and the absence of any major public incidents have led to a sharp decline in the number of witch hunts in recent years, but the city's witch hunters remain vigilant, ready to spring into action should the need arise. Most of the residents have not forgiven the current ruler, Prelate Huron, for the role he has in the witch hunts. Fear or common decency prevents them from airing their grievances. Rumours circulate among Huloran's closest advisers that the prelate hides his shame in public, but privately frets over whether the cure was worse than the disease, such is the burden that paladins must bear. The Mendivian Crusade counts many adventurers among its ranks, but not all of them are driven by pure and righteous motives. Some seek to reclaim family lost lands to the ravenous horde of demons spilling forth from the world wound. Others seek revenge against demons for the harms visited upon them and loved ones. Some serve for personal profit, hoping to loot the remains of old Sarkorsus. Many enlist simply because they're trying to prevent the world wound from engulfing their own homelands. The need is so great that several units consist entirely of convicted criminals substituting military service for commuted sentences back home. It's only when the parolees arrive on the front lines that they realise the full magnitude of the bargains they've struck. Events from your group's childhood provided early indications that they have the makings of good adventurers. Whatever their reasons are for joining, they are now soldiers in the Mendivian Crusade. Welcome to the fight and good hunting. Scenario 01, The Godless Ones. Prologue. Early on, the Pathfinders approached the Whiff Wardens, a far-reaching coalition of spellcasters dedicated to maintaining planar boundaries and fighting evil summoners. However, the Rift Wardens closest to the World Wound dismissed the Pathfinders' request to assist directly in the Society's upcoming expedition into the World Wound as impossible, as many of them are already committed to the Fifth Crusade in Mendev and are unable to help in the face of greater threats and priorities. 
Fortunately, not all the Rift Wardens are occupied in the World Wound, and the organization's leadership provides the Society with a possible alternative. Were the Society to aid another group of Rift Wardens, freeing them of their ongoing obligations, those spellcasters could help in the march on to Duridum. These leaders named Jahani Jojai as the contact for this Rift Warden team. Your group of Pathfinders set out to the designation of Rahadum in order to find her. As you arrive at Rahadum capital, Azur, the local Rift Warden organization, tells you that several Rift Wardens have recently disappeared. Their commander, Jahani, began finding hints that the Blackfire Adepts had infiltrated Azur, so she began gathering Rift Wardens from her region to strike decisively at the rival organization. Unfortunately, Jahavi proved to be far better at banishing fiends than at masking her plans, and the Blackfire Adepts learned of her intentions and laid a trap for the Rift Wardens, capturing the entire team shortly before the Pathfinder's arrival in Azur. Having accomplished most of their short-term goals in Azur, many of the Blackfire Adepts have now departed to begin building bases of operations in other cities, while one or two remain behind to interrogate and later execute the Rift Warden captives. Among the remaining group of cultists of Baphomet is the local leader of the Blackfire Adepts, Safini. The Blackfire Adepts occupied a walled compound from which they run legitimate slave training businesses as a cover for darker research. Rumour has it that Safini also has some Siesto demons under her control, patrolling the building. Knowing that any open attack will draw the attention of the local guards, you must infiltrate or insult the compound, extract the crippled Rift Wardens, and escape without perishing from the Blackfire Adept's magic or being captured by Azur's law enforcement. At ease, Eagle Watch recruits, your squad commander, Iradeth Tyroblade, a half-orc paladin of Emmerdine, calmly looked over her assembled soldiers. Although new to command, she carried herself with authority. The years of prejudice against her half-orc lineage moulded Irabath into the strong, confident woman who now stood before you. I know some of you are experienced adventurers, but adventuring isn't the same thing as being a soldier. A soldier has to know how to take orders and give them when appropriate. Success is a team effort. There is no room for putting your agenda ahead of the welfare of your squad. A soldier has to do their job and remain confident that their squad mates will do their jobs to ensure the success of the mission. The scale of battle is often much larger. While adventurers might be used to fight against a dozen foes or more, a soldier's enemies number in the hundreds of thousands. Knowing how to move in formation, listen for battlefield instructions, and maintain courage in the face of overwhelming odds is critical. Normally, I'd turn you into proper soldiers through a combination of basic training and light duty. Circumstances, however, require me to take advantage of your unique talents and experience right away. A Diabolist named Safini from the Hell Knight Order of the Gate, who previously consulted with the Crusade on how to close the World Wound, has gone rogue. When she first disappeared 11 months ago, we assumed Safroni was killed on one of her excursions within the World Wound. Now she's reappeared, but something's changed. Safini is summoning Deezons instead of Devils, and instructing her minions to attack our patrols and supply convoys. I need you to put a stop to it. My scout and Vinya will provide you with reconnaissance to help you find and eliminate the target. Any questions? A conscripted team master near the back of the squad snickers. It is well known that Irida's scouts was also her wife. Irvina Tradeglade was the only person who voluntarily transferred to the newly commissioned Half-Orcs unit. Everyone else was a new recruit conscripted to the squad. Before Iridith could issue a verbal rebuke, a Mendivian crusader to your left asks, Why do we serve in the same army as the devil worshippers of Chelex? Should we not put them to the sword, lest their wicked ways lead to our downfall when facing the demonic hordes? Warfare requires many different tools, Iridus stated with a practice akum, sharing an observation she clearly provided several times before. You wouldn't outfit your entire army with only swords. You'd equip your soldiers with bows, pikes and maces and axes in addition to swords. It's the same situation with soldiers of Chelix. They are another tool to help us in the Crusades. Hell's infernal masters may value the rule of law to exceed excess of tyranny, but they have no love of the disorderly, capricious nature of the demon lords and their ilk. 
we don't have the luxury of turning down assistance when it's offered. But surely it is blasphemy to employ the wicked in the fight against evil, the Mendivian crusader proclaimed. No force can stand against the army of the righteous. And yet it did, my brother-in-arms, Iridith gently replied. The first Mendivian crusade was conducted by the faithful of Imadad, and while we accomplished much in driving the demons back into the world wound, we could not reclaim the territory lost or close the world wound itself. The first crusade was as much a fight for the soul of our faith than it was a fight against the evil. The external threat united the two halves of our congregation. Those who believe Aradan is dead and his herald Emily is the inheritor, and those who believe Aradan is only missing and he will one day return to resume his rightful place. You've seen the results of accepting the impure among our ranks, the Mendivian crusader shouted. These crusades have come and gone since then, but all we have to show for it are the war stones and many soldiers who succumbed to temptation. Some of those corrupted soldiers were paladins, Iridith snarled while baring her teeth as her orchid's heritage exerted itself. She paused a moment to breathe and relax before offering a measured reply. Brittle steel breaks when tested. It must flex a little to remain intact. I hope you one day realize the wisdom of my words. I will do my best to take your feelings into account when creating my duty roster, but I can't make guarantees. I remind you of your oath as a paladin to obey the just instructions of your superiors when they walk the path of righteousness. Any more questions? Iridith asked with a stern look, daring someone to speak up. Good. Please consult with Arena for your assigned patrol routes and report your findings. Dismissed. And that is it. That is the end of all that introduction. Wow. So, what's the what's the takeaway here? There's a big portal into the netherworld, and it has destroyed this city. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. There's this weird mythical dwarven city in there. There's all these crusades going on. There's a bit of tension between the the crusaders because they're they're not all paladins. There's some people who practice dark and inverted commas arts, and one of their paladin, well, a demonologist has gone completely rogue and is actually part of the Baphomet cult and we have to go hunt her down. So that is the plan. Also, there's like, you know, this weird distrust thing going on, you know, like we don't know who's who and there's like this sort of underbelly of nationalism and uh, isolationism inside the city with all the crusades and the fake witch hunters and stuff, you know, it's a pretty volatile place. So, but that's the plan. We're going to be uh, hunting. We've got. Our, we've been ordered to go and investigate this Safini business. That's what we're doing now. And yeah, let's get into it. I'll see you guys next time.